The Melba Story. The story of Australia's most famous woman. The true story, fully authenticated, and featuring another wonderful Australian singer, Glenda Raymond. The Melba Story. In the year 1902, Melba returned to her native land, Australia, after an interval of 16 years, only to be told that her beloved father, David Mitchell, had suffered a sudden collapse. Already exhausted by her journey and all the emotional strain of the occasion, Melba was taken by a doctor to the room where her father was lying. He's in here, madam, but it's doubtful if he'll be able to recognize you or to speak to you. May I speak to him, doctor? Better not, I think. Oh, very well. This is a very sad homecoming for you. All the pleasure's gone out of it now. What does anything matter? If the person I love best in all the world isn't there to share it with me. He'll recover with care and rest. Oh, come in now and see him, but don't stay long. The nurse, Madame Melba, is here. Oh, Doctor, the patient's conscious. He's been asking for her. Oh, please, let me see him. Uh, just a moment. I'd better have a look at him first. Sit down here, Madame. Uh, no, no, thank you, I couldn't. I'd rather stand. I know how you feel. You... you said my father had been asking for me. Does that mean he's all right? Well, hardly that, I'm afraid, but it's an encouraging sign. As a rule, they're unconscious for several hours. Here's the doctor coming back. Looking quite pleased, too. It's quite remarkable. I'd never have believed it possible. He's not only conscious, but in full possession of his faculties. May I see him now? Yes, for just one minute. You'd better come along too, nurse. Yes, doctor. Madam Melba, will you do your best to keep calm? It's most important that your father shouldn't become excited. I I'll be all right. Good. Come along, then. Here's your daughter, Mr. Mitchell. How are you, Daddy? Nelly, lass. I'm here, darling. Here at last. And I'm going to stay with you until you're better. No, no. The train is waiting. I've made up my mind, Daddy. The train can go on to Melbourne without me. You mustn't disappoint the people. Nothing else matters to me now. I'm staying right here at Albury. Oh, no, lass, no. Madam Elba. Yes, nurse? I think you should do as your father asks. It's important that he shouldn't be worried. But how can I leave him like this? He'll be in good hands, and he knows there are thousands of people waiting to see you. Please tell him that you'll go on. Oh, no, I, I can't. Nelly. Please, madam. It's for the best. Nelly, lass. All right, Father. I'll do as you say. I'll go on. before we reach Melbourne, madam. We should be there in about an hour's time, Ellen. Are you feeling all right, madam? I'm not sure how I feel at the moment. The news of my father's collapse has left me rather shattered. I suppose there will be a lot of people waiting for you in Melbourne. Well, judging by what's happened at these country stations, I 
I've had addresses of welcome presented to me at Wangaratta, Uroa, Benalla, Seymour. There have been flowers, cheers and deputations and the railway buildings have been decorated with flags and greenery. Oh, it's been wonderful. They say that crowds have been waiting at Spencer Street Station since early this morning. What happens when I get there? I understand I'm being met by the governor, the Lord Mayor and other distinguished people. And that there's to be a triumphal procession along Collins and Swanston Streets into St Kilda Road and so on to Turek. Oh, all this must be very exciting for you. If my father were with me, I'd be enjoying every moment of it. As it is, I've just got to do as he asks and make the best of it. Madam Melba, you've just been given the most wonderful reception that Melbourne's ever known. You should be very proud. Yes, I am. And very grateful, too. But it's all been spoiled for me, because my father isn't here. How is he? Has there been any improvement in his condition? A little, but I'm afraid it's going to be a long time before he's able to get about. He won't be attending any of your Melbourne concerts, then? Oh, no, that's quite out of the question. And I was so looking forward to his being here. When I go out on that platform at the town hall on this night, I'll be missing him dreadfully.
some news for you. Yes? What is it? Not bad news, I hope. I've just had a message to say that there's a very special guest in the audience tonight. Oh, you mean Lord Richard Neville? No. I mean your father. In just a few moments, we'll return to the Melba story. The Melba Story. Did you say my father is out there in front now? Yes. I understand he's made a most remarkable recovery. He insisted on coming. Madam, they're calling for you. You'll have to sing again. This time I'll play my own accompaniment. Up you go then. Gentlemen, my very good friends, it gives me great happiness to tell you that my dear father is in the audience tonight. And so, in his honour, I'm going to sing the old Scottish ballad that he taught me as a child, Coming Through the Rhine. Oh.
tell me you've had a very successful tour, Nelly. Yes, Father. And I've established a world record. Mm, how's that? Do you know how much I got for my last concert? No. Two thousand three hundred and fifty pounds. Mm. Yeah, that's a lot of money, even in 1902. It's more than any singer has ever received for a single night's performance. Mm. Uh, you must have done pretty well for yourself over the years. Yes, I can't complain. Have you saved any money at all? A little. How much? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps 20,000 pounds? Why, you're richer than I am. Father, is that the truth? Were you telling me the truth? No, Father. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're quite right, lassie. Never tell anyone what you've got. Not even me. Don't worry. I won't. When are you leaving for England? On Friday. I suppose you realize we're not likely to meet again. Oh, nonsense, Father. You're a... Oh, no, no. I'm getting older all the time. And I've had my warning. Well, I have nothing to regret, and I have something to be very proud about. I mean, having you for a daughter. Without you, I couldn't have done a thing. And I want you to know that I'm very, very grateful. God bless you, lass. You'll go on to bigger things yet, I know. But you won't forget your old daddy, will you? Never. Oh, never. And do you know why? Because you're the only man in the world who ever got the better of me in an argument. Well, I hope you'll always be able to say that, Nelly. In this world, you know, you've got to be a fighter. I don't like fighting with anyone. You haven't forgotten what happened when you first went to England, have you? What do you mean, Father? I mean that you were too meek and mild. You let people trample all over you. But I came out all right, just the same. Uh, more by good luck than judgment, if you ask me. When you go back to England this time, just make sure that it doesn't happen again. Be strong, Nelly, and don't let anyone get the better of you. Would you promise me that? <laughs> yes, Father, I promise. <laughs> No, Mr. Grau, I won't sing in America this year. And you needn't argue, I've quite made up my mind. I'm sorry, but it's quite impossible. I've decided to stay in England. And Madame Melba, what are your plans for the coming years? I'm staying in England to give a series of special concerts. But what about America? No American trip this time. But Mr. Morris Grau says... Never mind what Mr. Morris Grau says. It's what Nellie Melba says that counts this time. Oh, um, here's a ticket for my next concert, if you'd like it. It's on Saturday night at the Albert Hall. Madam, Madam Melba will sing the waltz song from Tom Jones.
Good evening, ma'am. Who are you? Oscar Hammerstein. I came to see you last week, but you wouldn't let me in. Why? Because I had an idea of what you wanted. Oh, just an idea? You wanted to offer me an American engagement, didn't you? Right, and that's why I'm here now. I'm sorry, but it's out of the question. Why? I've made up my mind I'm not going to visit America for a year. Well, what's your reason? I'm very tired. I've been working continuously for nearly 20 years. And if I don't have a little peace and quiet soon, I'll be worn out. I'm even cutting down my work in Europe to a minimum. If you stop working even for a few months, you'll be wondering how to fit on your time. You're like me, Madame Elba. You couldn't rest any more than I could. <laughs> you seem to know all about me, Mr. Hammerstein. I know enough to be sure that I've got to have you for the opening of my season. You're wasting your time, Mr. Hammerstein. Ah, no, no, you don't mean that. What makes you think so? Uh, you opera stars are all the same. You just like to be uh, kidded along a bit. Is that so? Sure. You see things my way. They always do. There's the door, Mr. Hammerstein. Eh? Just a moment. I'll open it for you. What's the idea? I'm showing you the way out. But you haven't heard my proposition yet. I don't want to hear it. I want you to come and sing for me. No, thank you. I'll give you $1,500 a night. Do you mind closing the door as you go out? Well, what do you say to 2000 I say good night. Well, that's got rid of him. 2500 and that's my last word. Go away, or I'll call a policeman. Oh, that scared him all right. 3000 and you sail for New York on September 4th. The imperious Nellie Melba, who had often boasted that she never lost an argument, now meets one as determined as herself. Her clash with Oscar Hammerstein will be described in the next fascinating chapter of the Melba story. The Melba Story was written by John Ormiston Reed and produced by Dorothy Crawford. The Australian Symphony Orchestra was conducted by Hector Crawford. The role of Melba was spoken by Marcia Hart and sung by the Australian coloratura soprano, Glenda Raymond. Mm -hmm.